Hey everyone, it's your buddy and pal, Carnic Serenity Wargaming and Explanations. Here it is, finally at the last video to cover the last remaining squadron cards. And as I've mentioned before in other videos, I will not be going back to re-review cards or update any cards. I know some of them, especially from my way back in my early days, like four years ago now or something like that, are a bit out of date. Uh, but I'm not going to go back... And do any updates so without getting more into that let's focus on these two squadron cards that came out with rapid reinforcements one we're going to cover darth vader in a tie defender and harris and doula and the next wing let's go first one i want to cover is a let's go ahead and cover harris and doula so Harris and Dula, the X-Wing Squadron, if you see in front of the name, those little dot or bullet points signifies they are unique. So they do have a VCX version. So you have to choose if you want to bring either the X-Wing or the VCX. You can't bring both. They are for the Rebel Alliance, as you see there next to their squadron name is their faction icon. Lower left-hand corner is the X-Wing icon. Opposite corner is their point cost, 23 points. They are a double brace ace, which is standard for X-Wing aces. Standard X-Wing speed, which is speed 3, hole, 5 hole. Their anti-squadron armament is slightly unique with that single red, double blue, and a black die. And then their anti-ship squadron armament is a black die. So Hera, uh, for anti-ship purposes, that black die is really, really nice to have. Makes them more reliable than most X-Wings with just that red die. Uh, Hera also not having the standard four blue for the anti-squadron armament, that kind of unique mix of colors there, which I actually, I really like for Hera. And, you know, I'm always a big proponent of the double blue, double black is, you know, the best of the best. But I like the fact that, you know, you kind of have a little bit of, of uh, risk there with that red dye, but more reliability with that black dye and then consistency of blue dye. So it does make Hera a little swingy, but at the same time, like you're not wanting to shoot aces with Hera. I feel like you want to be shooting generic squadrons uh, because just that red dice is too swingy to really rely on shooting at aces unless you really have to. Let's get into their keywords. So before I touch on the card effect, they have two keywords. They come with dodge one and bomber. So most X-Wings have Escort. Uh, Hera does not have Escort. Uh, they still keep Bomber, which Bomber allows the critical icon on a die when attacking ships to count as damage. So again, with that black die, the ability to potentially deal two damage is always good. And then they have Dodge 1, which is while you're defending against a squadron during the spend defense token step, you may choose one die to be re-rolled. So when defending against squadrons, again, this does not work against ship attacks, only squadron attacks, uh, you can re-roll a die, which that's actually, it's like a free defense token. You don't have to spend. It can never be exhausted. It can't be targeted. So that's nice. It makes Hera definitely pretty survivable. Okay, the card effect, though. This is why you're bringing Hera. This is what makes Hera so great and makes, a, you know, bringing like a bunch of X-Wings also pretty nifty. Yeah, when you are activated, friendly squadrons at distance one that have escort gain adept one until the end of round. Adept one being that you get a reroll for the attack that you make, whether it be against ships or against squadrons. So essentially think of Hera like a free built-in bomber command center. So that is just, you know, that's, that's really nice. But again, you... Have to take in consideration, again, for the card effect, how it works is that when you're activated, uh, you know, you have to be activated for friendly squadrons at distance one. Or, no, wait, hold on. That's been, that. yeah, that's right. I was going to say, I'm like, that doesn't seem right. No, that's right, because um, Hera has received a errata. Uh, because I was like, yeah, this is this is the old text. I was like, oh, yeah, I want to make sure it's pointing out that they have old text. And, yes, that's the old text, which was causing lots of confusion and unintended interactions and all this other craziness, right? So this was errata because this was causing problems. And that so that should read now, while a friendly squadron that has escort is at distance one to two, it has a depth one, which is much cleaner, much easier to do, it, just like you're, you're doing with like Dengar. It's just, are they at distance one to two? Okay, great, they have a depth one. So, okay, I was going to say, yeah, so that text just made things slightly complicated 
so uh, slightly complicated. So I'm glad that that was changed because it just drastically simplifies Hera. So again, this only works with squadrons with escort. It doesn't matter if they're unique or if they're generic. So typically you're wanting to bring X-Wing squadrons along with them. You're wanting to bring, it's just X-Wings. Or no, the YT-1300s also have escort. So X-Wings, YT-1300s, the X-Wing unique aces. I don't think anyone else carries escort for the rebels. It's just X-Wings, yeah. So essentially Hera Syndulla is make X-Wings great again. And it, it's very thematic. You know, Hera Syndulla often in the Rebels TV show led X-Wings in the battle, uh, often directing and, and pointing things out. And even though Hera herself is a great pilot, uh, you often see that just like in the Rebels show, Hera is always like the last one alive while the entire squadron is just decimated or blown up. So I think it's very thematic that Hera doesn't have escort because all the other, it's like plot armor, right? All the squadrons are escorting Hera and then they all blow up and then Hera is the only one left. <laughs> because she's all dodging around trying not to die and everyone else can't seem to accomplish that so that's for me that feels very thematic and on point i think hera themselves all around is a decent squadron and i know some folks are like ah 23 points that's that's a little expensive i mean you could bring lando carizian for that same point cost right but again why are you bringing hera is not just because of their base stats. You're bringing them to buff the ever-living crap out of your X-Wings. So, you know, if they're if they're going in to attack something, they got the Adept one, they can reroll a blue. Or again, if they're trying to shoot ships with that red die, even though they have bomber, you know, when you roll those blanks, it always feels bad. So it's nice to be able to have a reroll on that. And yeah, in the, in the rare edge cases, I've seen somebody bring just mass YT 1300s where they had the reroll attacking and then re-roll on the counter attack but also it actually gets more value out of that anti-ship blue dice being able to re-roll that into a hit you know potentially so there's Hera is expensive but well worth the point cost and you often see Hera brought, brought with like bigs and jan and you get what's called a bigs ball going on uh, just because you then you get a lot of value out of those x-wings the flip side of that though again is that you're bringing a lot of x-wings and if you know you don't have to bring you know six x wings to get value out of hera i think you can definitely get value out of hera as long as you're bringing like three or four other escort uh ships whether it be yt's or x wings or unique x wings uh hera with luke skywalker for example is is really good because even though luke's got that black die it always feels like they just roll blanks every single time i try to attack with luke so it's nice to kind of have that like a that chance to, to try again. You're, you're helping Luke being able to use the forest because Hera is just that good. I know there was a little bit of controversy when Hera came out was like, why does she give a depth? That's like a Jedi skill. It's like, no, that's never been said in any anything ever. Adept just means you're good at something. And I know some people want to take adept as like, oh, you know, they're adept in the force. And why can't it be both these things? Why can't they someone be either adept in the force or they're just adept at what they do? Like Poe Dameron in uh, the new Star Wars trilogy, they technically don't have any force ability, but yet they're the greatest starfighter pilot in the galaxy who can outfly and outshoot Kylo Ren. Like, that's nuts. So, yeah, we'll leave it at that. But Hera, great squadron, great addition, helps Rebels have kind of like a different mindset rather than just kind of like you know they still kind of want to try to turtle but this helps them have the ability where if they want to go on the offensive they can go on the offensive with Hera so really like Harrison Duel. there's no no other crazy things going on with Hera no other interactions or things to consider again except for this uh errata change here all right let's go on to talk about Darth Vader. And full disclosure, I, I had a hand in the Rapid Reinforcements one as a playtester and, and a little bit of um, helping out with some things. Uh, but Darth Vader was was an interesting one. Uh, I mean, they all were. Everything in Rapid Reinforcements one was, was an interesting um, time. But Darth Vader was something that when we saw that the the we had the opportunity to have the tie defender squadron was just like oh like like we this is the chance to actually make a good darth vader because the tie vans version is just gets garbage it's garbage it's terrible it's garbage and hopefully at some point in the future maybe it gets reworked to not be 
awful, but Darth Vader Tide Defender is like we get we get everything. And I will fully admit that, you know, even though Vader well, let's just get into it and then I'll get into to other stuff. Okay, so Darth Vader, you'll see there's a little dotted bullet point in front of their name. Signifies they're unique. You can only ever have one Darth Vader, which means you if you bring Darth Vader the TIE Defender Squadron, you can't bring the commander, you can't bring the officer, you can't bring any other Darth Vader card. Uh, the bottom left-hand corner is the TIE Defender uh, icon. And again, this is for the Empire. You'll see their faction icon up there next to their name. Bottom right-hand corner of the card, you'll see the point cost, which is 25 points. So expensive, but the value you get out of this card is insane. So um, very similar TIE Defender stats in which you get the Speed 5, Hole 6. Uh, this is where there's some deviation in that you swap out one blue. So instead of the double blue, double black, you get a double black, single blue, and a single red. And this is still just, it's so strong killing squadrons. And when you get to the card effect, we'll see why. They're anti-ship armament, double, double reds. So normally double reds is... Like, okay, well, if they don't have bomb, look at Thai Phantoms. Like, Thai Phantoms are so swingy because they don't have bomber, but at the same time, it doesn't ever seem like they do anything because they didn't have bomber. Darth Vader comes with bomber. So, again, there's two blanks and an accuracy side. So, out of a, you know, eight sided die, there's three sides, three of five, or and then five sides that will deal damage, and three sides that technically don't deal any damage. But that's offset buy all the keywords all the awesome amazing keywords i get oh uh and they are a brace evade ace brace evade and i'll kind of touch on why that's so unique in a second but keywords they have a depth two, a depth two. this is darth vader we're talking about you know so whether they're shooting at squadrons whether they're shooting at ships they can reroll two dice which is just mind-blowing i mean you know you look at like the jedi aces for republic and they get that adept one, adept two, which makes them great. But for Vader, it's just like, woof. This, I mean, if, if you've seen somebody roll double blank on a Vader shot attacking a ship, and then they pick up both, and then they roll two doubles out of it, like you'll see the power of adept two when trying to bomb ships. Because again, they have bomber, they have rogue. So rogue is during the squadron phase when they activate, they can move and or shoot. They can do both, or or one or the other in any order they want. I mean, they can. Rogue is just really good. You're not having to uh, to worry about activating Vader. And that's kind of thematic is, you know, Vader wants to wait and see the battlefield, see the battle unfold, and then try to pounce on something. So let's get into the card effect. While attacking a unique squadron, each of your critical icons adds one damage to the damage total. So this is practically almost word for word the same as their TIE Advanced Squadron which is while attacking each of your critical icons adds one damage to the damage total. So the slight, the slight tweak though is the tight advance fader, their critical icon will deal an extra damage against ships. And this, that's only against the squadron. And that's, that's a fair trade off because of the fact that they have the double red die. So I feel like this is still as strong or just as strong of a squadron or stronger than the Darth Vader tie advance in that you're still swinging and kicking the crap out of any unique squadron you're going to shoot at. Um, but you're, you're still dealing, you know, totally just fine amounts of damage against ships. And again, this tie defender squadron for Vader is not really picking on generic squadrons in this sense because again it only works against unique squadrons it doesn't work against everything so it makes vader want to be an assassin an ace killer they don't want to bother with killing generics you know there's no challenge in that right they want to shoot uniques so i and i've had this happen so with their dice pool again the blacks they each have a 25 percent chance of rolling hit crit so that that damage is not one damage it's two damage when you roll a black hit crit uh, if you roll blue, so again, by having those critical icons being able to deal the damage against uniques, again, that turns them the damage, 75% chance of damage against a unique squadron. Same thing with the red die. You know, typically those those red criticals don't do anything for you. Now they count as damage, again, if you're shooting uniques. So you have the opportunity to roll like one, two, 
three, four, five, six. If you roll the red into double, that's like seven damage. You you have the ability to roll seven damage just off their base stats. Never mind if you add in flight controllers, which can bump that to eight. And again, you have a depth two. So it's very, very hard for Vader to miss unless they're trying to shoot a scatter ace because that one blue really hurts them if they're trying to shoot a scatter ace because they don't get the accuracy. Um they're done because they can't lock the scatter to then push that damage in. But if they can get the accuracy and push the damage in, uh, it's it's a, it's a hurt train, hurt hurt uh, town, taking them to hurt town. So again, Vader assassination on unique squadrons, and again, this works on unique squadrons that don't have defense tokens. So like, it, you know, just just like in the in A New Hope, if he descends on Gold Squadron, which has no defense tokens, uh, he can one shot Gold Squadron, and it's it's like, oh, it's just like in the movie. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> Okay, so I, I think I've hyped up their ability, and there's no errata, no other clarification. They're very straightforward. So I know some people bemoan the fact that Vader has Rogue, because like, oh, Vader would be so great with Salone, and it's like, yeah, I wonder why Rogue is on there. That's crazy. It's like, yeah, it's like you know, there was playtesting done, and... You know, it was. You will still see Vader taken in Salon list regardless because you'll see Vader combined with Merrick Steel. And between the both of them, they can annihilate uh, a flotilla in, in two, between two turns easily, if not in the same turn sometimes, just depending on if they get the accuracies or not. So they're still a good wombo combo. Uh, so even though they can't use Salon's ability to spend tokens. Uh, Vader is still strong enough all on his own to like not even care about that. And as I mentioned before, Vader, you really want to use them as the the final blow, a follow-up. So especially if you're like first player, if you can activate Vader last to like go in and snipe something out, and then when you start the next round, you can then activate them by a ship with a squadron command and then have them punch and then try to run away as long as you're not engaged or locked down by something. So I like using that, like that jump in, hit something, start next turn, activate, hit something again, and then run away. Because Vader is, despite the whole value, easily susceptible to just being knocked out very quickly because they are not a double brace ace. They are a brace evade. So the evade makes them really strong against ship flak. They can sit under ship flak. They can, they can pop that evade to reroll die. And they can potentially, as long as they're not taking multiple flak shots, if they're just taking the one, that evade is giving them a much higher probability against ships. And again, I feel like that's thematic. Watch the Rebel show where he's flying around and dodging all the all the shots from from the ships. And uh, and again, Kylo Ren in uh, the Last Jedi where they're dodging around all that oncoming fire, and his wingmates are not able to. So some folks are like, well, why doesn't he also have dodge? And it's like that would be. That would be too much. Like you'd have to either toss a keyword or drastically increase the point value, and it, it just that would just be like too much, right? That would just would be too much. So I feel like not having dodge but having the evade is a good compromise. Uh, and again, the single brace, like you know, if they do get hit by a squadron, if they are not able to accuracy the brace, because you when you're attacking Vader, always accuracy the brace. Uh, because Brace is always going to guarantee reducing damage compared to Evade, which is only a chance, right? It's only a chance that it's going to reduce damage. So Vader actually is terrible getting bogged down in a squadron fight because two, three X-Wings can easily just blow Vader out of the water uh, between them. And typically that's much faster than somebody like Merrick Steel. Merrick Steel with the double Brace actually has a higher probability of surviving like three squadron attacks in a row compared to Vader. Vader will typically die in two if they have like four dice or more. Um, it just comes down to like what's the dice count, what's what color of die is being thrown, etc. Like if it's just somebody throwing all black dice, Vader can tank that, no problem. It's it's when they're it's the four blues. They get at least one accuracy. They're pushing in two three damage. It's where Vader really will get into trouble. So again, don't don't chuck Vader in the middle of an enemy squadron ball and expect them to last very long. Unless you 
and this is where things get really interesting, is that some folks will bring Vader, they'll bring a long tail to Vula, who gives the, the gives escort to people around them. Uh, and it's just like, ugh, that combo in of a spell, Vader and Tel Davula, just those two alone is like the new Wombo combo of like, this is my fighter screen. Because it used to be Sienna and Valen. Because you still get a lot of value from Sienna and Valen, Rudor. But now you can get like even more value bringing Vader and Tel Davula and the, the uh, it's just hard. It is hard to kill both of them very quickly, even if you're chucking four, five, six squadrons at them at the same time unless you're just getting lucky in dice rolls. It's just they're tough with that pair. And then if you bring that pair and Valen and Sienna, those four squadrons is actually like a really decent squadron screen at a let's I mean let's build it out. What's the cost for that? So seventy two points. So you're you're spending, you know, half, roughly half of your squadron points bringing four squadrons but what force i mean look at the four squad i mean this is something that's going to be a big speed bump to even 134 of squadrons so like that's that's a really good screen that's pretty beefy and if your opponent doesn't bring squadrons uh you still got vader there helping the pitch and damage not so much these other three these other three aren't going to be really useful but they're all scatter aces so as long as you just keep plopping them in front of large ships where they keep getting run over, I mean, you can contribute with point damage because they're going to scatter all day long. It's going to be very hard to kill them, and you potentially can get some some lucky damage going in here. But Vader is going to be your boy pulling their weight. So, all right, well, that is Darth Vader TIE Defender. Uh, it, you know, for, for Hera or for Vader, I think these were excellent additions along with everything else, rapid reinforcements. I do hope we'll... You know, it was confirmed that we are getting a Rapids Reinforcements 2 by Will Schick on an interview with Kravok. Uh, no no timeline, no deadline, no idea when that will come, other than that they confirm that Armada is at least getting one more uh, there. I've got more to say about that interview, and also for myself, I'm going to save that for a video on Monday. So come back on Monday when I'm going to drop the video, I've got some news and announcements. Uh, we're getting into Adepticon here real soon. I definitely will talk about that on Monday as well. I uh, appreciate you all watching the video, and hey, I'll catch you next time.